The Pike County Sheriff has obtained arrest warrants after a video was posted online showing a man running naked through Walmart, pouring milk on himself, and yelling he was on fire. Sheriff's deputies say they plan to arrest Timothy Smith of Phelps and David Daniels of Belfry in connection to the incident at the Walmart in South Williamson. The video went online Wednesday night and quickly racked up hundreds of views, but the sheriff told me breaking the law is nothing to be proud of. Well, Steve, good evening once again from Lucas Oil Stadium in downtown Indianapolis with Josh McKitty. I'm Tanner Hesterberg. Josh, so much talent here. Duke, Michigan State, Kentucky, Wisconsin, the quote-unquote blue blood programs, <laughs> bringing in so many talented players here to the Final Four, but these players all have a very high level of respect for one another. Yeah, of course, do. everybody <laughs> remembers that as the Leitner game. Christian Leitner hits the game-winning shot, negates what would have been the game-winning shot by Sean Woods as Duke beats the Unforgettables, defeats Kentucky just heartbreak all across Big Blue Nation. A lot of people remember Leitner. Not as many people remember the guy who threw the pass. Remember, it was Grant Hill who hit Leitner with that pass. Hill, of course, went on to have a very successful NBA career after being a star at Duke, and uh, Grant Hill is now an analyst for CBS Sports. He will call the Final Four this weekend with Jim Nance and Bill Raftery, and earlier today he was gracious enough to sit down for an interview with me. And you've heard enough from me and Josh, so for the first time, we welcome in the third member of our Indianapolis Final Four coverage team, Morgan Lentis. Morgan, you were out and about talking to some UK fans and uh, some restaurant owners who are excited to have such large fan bases in town for the Final Four. Absolutely. Well, you mentioned how windy it is here right now. That's because we have some thunderstorms rolling in, expected to get here within the next few minutes. So for Kentucky fans making the sojourn to Indianapolis, you may run into some inclement weather. But for now, for Josh McKinney and Morgan Lentis, I'm Tanner Husterberg. Steve, back to you. Yeah, some high school students in Knox County got an extra incentive for their achievements this weekend. College and career ready students met up at Knox Central High School Saturday morning. They were allowed to choose their parking spot, given a free pass to park, and then actually got to paint that parking spot. Faculty members say it's part of an effort to reward success and hard work. Some students stayed at the school until after 3 p.m. Saturday painting their parking spots. What would you, I know he would paint a picture of Johnny Manziel in his parking <laughs> spot. What about you, Shane? It would either be like sunshine and a nice landscape or just a big green spot because that's what I work in front of. That would day. work and you're used to it. So yeah. for real, what would you paint? Taylor Swift, of course. Come on. <laughs> I shouldn't have asked. <laughs> How about some weather? All right. Take our mind off yeah. of that. <laughs> okay, let me see if I can recover from that. Hot and humid is the forecast over the next couple of days. Upper 80s with a 10% uh, chance of rain next two days. 20% Friday through Sunday will bump it up to 40% chance of rain on Labor Day, mainly in the afternoon. I don't think Labor Day will be a complete washout. Oh, good. I think there's some bad blood between <laughs> us now. <laughs> Only you. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us tonight. You can always find the latest headlines on WYMT.com. Have a good night. Things are starting to get a little spooky in Pikeville. Pikeville police have been hard at work the past couple of weeks putting together a haunted trail. Police say they spend about one month putting the trail together at Bob Amos Park before it's ready. This is the second year they've had the haunted fundraiser. The haunted trail will be open every Friday and Saturday in October at nightfall. And you told me I didn't say spooky, no, right? No, 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 no. It <laughs> needs to be spooky or something off kilter like that. That is definitely off kilter. <laughs> All right. Congratulations. Ah, uh, what's what not can. off kilter, though, this nice forecast we have coming up for the weekend. A segue. Plenty of sunshine <laughs> next what couple I do. of days. With... Segways, not spooky. That's <laughs> my specialty. All right. Let's... Senator, does the United States need boots on the ground as part of its strategy to defeat ISIS? I think the boots on the ground ought to be Arab boots on the ground. I think that a lasting victory or a lasting peace over there will only come when the Arab nations rise up. Tonight, the Leslie County High School girls basketball team defeated Breathitt County. But while the Lady Eagles were winning on the court, one woman was earning an even bigger victory on press row. Now, Jan did receive a good report in January when her last treatment results came back, and she's hoping for another good report in April. In the meantime, she's looking forward to crossing another item off her bucket list when she sees Stevie Wonder in concert next month. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 11.
Good evening, I'm Tanner Hesterberg. Investigators in Letcher County are trying to find out more about an elderly woman found dead this week, but they're more interested in how she lived than how she died. Sheriff's deputies yesterday found 87-year-old Christine Blair dead at her home on Doty Creek in the Jeremiah community. They say Blair rarely left her house and only talked to a couple of people, but the stories she told them are fascinating. From leaving her native Poland to becoming a conscript worker in Germany, to marrying a soldier from Letcher County in Switzerland and moving to the United States. And anyone with information can call the Letcher County Sheriff's Office at the number on your screen, 606-633-2293. Letcher Funeral Home is handling arrangements. Laurel County deputies arrested a man yesterday. They say held his pregnant girlfriend against her will for three days. Deputies say they charged 20 year old Eric Anderson with unlawful imprisonment, assault and wanton endangerment. His girlfriend is 31 weeks pregnant. Police say she told them Anderson assaulted her, wouldn't let her leave their home and made her go three days without food. They also say the victim claimed Anderson made threats to punch her stomach and kill her baby if he went to jail. Some Clay County teachers say they were shocked when a student showed up with bruises all over her body. Police say the six-year-old girl had black eyes and her mother caused the injuries. Manchester police arrested 28-year-old Jessica Sasser and charged her with criminal abuse. Garrett Weimer has the latest on the investigation. Often on rain and it could be heavy at times. We'll take a look at how long the cold and dreary weather will last coming up here in a few minutes. Chief Meteorologist Shane Smith, thank you. We now know exactly how some of the money raised during the Sunday Best Benefit concert in Johnson County will be spent. More than $48,000 was raised during the concert and days after. The country music duo partnered with the Foundation for Appalachian Kentucky to raise money for people impacted by deadly flooding in July. $15,000 was given to the Johnson County Family Resource Youth Service Centers. $5,000 will go to the Red Bush Volunteer Fire Department. Veterans denied in Bell County. One group of vets say they were told they cannot sell t-shirts at an upcoming festival. Vets Serving Vets works to raise money for veterans in the community. They say they wanted to sell shirts in Middlesboro this weekend for the Cumberland Mountain Fall Festival, but festival committee members say the group did not fill out an application and they cannot bend the rules. Well, we've reached the end of our newscast, and it's also the end of an era of sorts. Brandon, this is the last time we'll get to anchor together. Mm -hmm. As many of you know, Brandon will be leaving us here in a couple weeks to take a job with Southeast Kentucky Community and Technical College. You'll be heading up their radio and TV programs. You'll be working for a, a great organization, but it's uh, definitely bittersweet to see you go. That's right, and uh, you know, we'll be doing our big final goodbye uh, next Friday on Mountain News this morning, but uh, it's been a pleasure. You know, uh, you've been a uh, become one of my best, very best friends and definitely sure. appreciate uh, the chance to get to know you and you'll, we'll still be seeing you around and I'm not going to say a whole lot now because <laughs> I've already been writing what I'm going to say well, next let's, Let me share one of my favorite moments that we've been able to have. Let's let's bring that picture up and this is uh, your wedding uh, in October yep. down in South Carolina with Stephanie, a, a wonderful girl that uh, is very, you guys are very lucky, very good for each other and then Rebecca Allier, our 11 o'clock producer and also one of our good friends as well and I'll never forget uh, having to go back and get the ring for you <laughs> after forgetting it before your wedding I but uh forget the ring being around you has made me a better broadcaster and and a better man most importantly and uh it's been my honor and i'll i'll never forget it hope we can stay close pleasure and a privilege my friend thanks brandon that does it for us tonight you can find the latest headlines on wymt.com good night